Welcome back, tribe. We got one here. A single mother rejected a good man. If you show a man, you'll stick with them. <laughs> like through the thunder and through stuff thunder. like that. You'll never see sunshine again. They're f***ing right. They're literally f***ing right. Because how many times? How many f***ing times do I have to put myself through this? <laughs> Bro, imagine this is your future mom and someone in class shows you this video. Are these people not aware of the consequences of making content this cringy? Anything, a woman will do anything for cloud on the internet, huh? In the West, it's wild. Can you imagine watching these videos? I've always thought in my mind, what if my mom had access to this stuff, was one of these women and did this and I'm growing up and I'm like, I'm just shaking my head, cringing that that's my parent. Can you imagine that? I feel for this next generation right now that's being born and their parents are literally online crying themselves like this. Wow. <laughs> I can't eat. I can't sleep. I can't <laughs> do nothing well. Nope. I'm literally shaking like, how do people do this to someone with no conscience at all? How do you really make uh, someone uh, feel like this and push someone this far? I don't understand. Basically said that when a man truly loves you, he will fix it. Like, there's no such thing as like, oh, that sucks or oh, sorry, babe. You don't feel good. He's like, what can I get for you? What can I do for you? What can I send you? What can I make you? Um, Like your tires popped. He's like, let me come get the car. Let me help you fix your tire. Or like he's going to take it to somebody to fix. You know what I mean? Like he's never going to like leave you stranded or leave you in a position where he can't help you in some type of way. So if a man truly loves you, like he's going to make. That's just called having a boyfriend. That's just called having someone to literally that cares about you you're in a monogamous relationship that's what men like to do by default she's giving advice based on the situation ship she's having and the men that are just pumping and dumping her that would not pick up the phone to help her for anything you're just a 2 a.m booty call Th this is the advice they're giving because it's me 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 what he can do for me 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 every guy i'm talking to does nothing for me but pump me and rearrange my guts send me on my way i'm sick of being treated like a piece of meat i want a real man a real man is literally to them in their eyes these days the bare minimum you would get for having a boyfriend back in your grandmama's day. That's how crazy the standards have fallen. That's how low of a man they're willing to open their legs up for. It's a hookah and chill now. It's a, oh my God, Brad, he's hot. It's a chat. He's got abs. Wow. Jawline on point. Oh my God. He's tall. Ridiculous. It's your life better in every single way. And that's just like the truth. And that's not like doing too much. The bar isn't too high. Like, no, like that's bare minimum. Like there's no such thing as like, oh, that sucks that like you have period cramps. Like make me a tea, heat up my heat blanket, like cuddle me, like simple. See, spoiled princess mentality surrounded by simps who never say no. She has two types of men. One that pump and dump her, give her nothing. And then two, the simpy dudes with no spine that give her everything except the tingles. She's looking for a man that'll give her the in-between, both. She wants tingles and to be taken care of. But she can't just stop picking the bad boys. So what happens when you're on dating apps? It's all the quality you're going to get. And until you learn how to give to a man, to bring something to the table, what you can do for him, how you can make his life easier, you're going to keep getting pumped and dumped. Okay, I need to know if this resonates with you. I was supposed to get married earlier this year and I called the wedding off two weeks before because I felt this insane intuitive sense that it was not the right thing for me to do. It took a lot of courage. It took a lot of bravery. The wedding was already planned in Italy. It was, wow. was like Cold destination, feet. giant five-day wedding, huge thing. And I called it off because I was listening to that intuition that I felt so strongly. Since then, I've moved to Italy to heal and grow and really lean into this transformation that I'm experiencing within myself. This experience has got me thinking a lot about the milestones that society puts on young women 
to achieve in order to have a full life. These milestones to me feel like graduating college, finding Prince Charming, securing the ring, getting the dress, having the big wedding, having a baby. I feel like as a young woman, you're sort of um, put this pressure on yourself to achieve those milestones. And if you don't achieve them, you're a failure and you are not going to have a full life. We just search for the you are. That's literally the definition of having a full life in the human experience. You just described the way to have the fullest life you possibly can in this short time span you have on Earth. Finding a partner, getting married, having kids. You had it all. You had the wedding plan, the invitation sent out, the location picked out, the dress. You were doing it in Italy. Now you've decided to leave, be a bozo, test the waters, blame society for pressures. Not even a pressure not even an expectation. This is just society saying, hey, if you do these things, this is typically the path that'll lead to the most self-fulfillment that you could have. And it's it's the same for both men and women. You trying to go against this is what's causing all the problems young people are having today. The depression, the loneliness, the feeling isolated, the feeling like life has no meaning. You know how much meaning children give you? All of my friends who have kids tell me the same thing. You had it. And you gave it up for what? To talk on TikTok about how you're coping with your decision to move to Italy by yourself. And let's see what else you're going to tell us. It's Prince Charming that's just going to sweep us off our feet. And then we hope for this wedding and da 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 da. And once we get those things, we end up being severely unhappy because we're not listening to our intuition and following the path that we should really be on. Why aren't the milestones more like discovering who you really actually are, not based on some pressure put on to you by the world we live in, why isn't it like hiking Mount Kilimanjaro or whatever? Like it could be whatever you want it to be. That's the whole point. Can't you do those things with a partner? You can go on hikes together. You can discover who you are independently within your own relationship. Hey, babe, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go on a hike. I'm going to go learn this new skill, develop this new hobby. You really got to leave the person that's willing to stay with you for life. This is crazy that this is being normalized. Point in life is to follow your heart and do what you want to do. Not what society Disney. you think you have Here to do. Here we go. So for me, I am throwing away all of these societal milestones that I felt like up until this point I needed to achieve. And I'm going to create my own milestones. I'm going to turn within. I'm going to follow my intuition. I'm going to follow the signs that the world gives me to keep me on the path of alignment. And I'm going to create my own milestones. Follow the signs the world gives me to keep me on my path of alignment. You see the word diarrhea that they give out? Man, these people, again, social media addict, red flag, told you. Milestones. And I hope that you do the same. I hope that you don't fall prey to this pressure that we're all experiencing as women. She's literally just talking about social media. The pressure she's experiencing is when she goes through social media and she sees the comparison is the thief of joy happening right before her eyes. The That chick had a $20,000 white dress. This girl flew to this private island, had her event there, and it was a super extravagant in this exotic location. She's seeing all of this. She's seeing the perfect highlight reel, and that's the pressure she's talking about. Society didn't put that on you. You're willingly consuming the poison. And then as you're being poisoned, externalize your problem instead of looking like, hey, I'm consuming too much crap for my brain. And now you got manipulated into destroying your entire relationship that you had. You had it all until you got brainwashed. It's not society. It's your consumption of social media. That's what's making you unhappy. And instead of blaming it on the correct problem, you created a problem and you decided to say the grass is greener on the other side. And now you're about to find out a brutal reality. Damn, man. Social media is becoming quickly my number one greatest red flag to look for in people. Seriously. And I hope that you actually make your life magic because when you look at the talking are magic fully in tune with yourself and this power that you have within you, your life will feel like magic. Is it just me, but there are a few men in my life that the rules simply do not apply. Like, usually my standards are very high. You know, I'm like dinner, cocktails, you know, I need like a car service. You need to bring me a limo, red carpet, ring, etc. But like with these guys, like some of my very... Hi, guys, etc. Ugh. (laughs) Next. Very like regal crushes that I have. Next. They have me by a chokehold, chokehold that like they can do the bare minimum. And I'm like, yes, Papa. Yes, Papa. 
Like all I need from them is like one hard eye emoji to my story. And that is enough to send me packing and moving into their basement for a month. Like one of them texted me this weekend saying, where you at? It's like 1 a.m. And usually it would be like, ew. The vulgar fry is killing me. Killing me. Valley girl. Killing me. But since it was him, I was like, where you at? Baby, I'm outside. I literally live in your bird feeder outside of your window. I left friend's 30th today and I was talking to her dad and he was like, Lani, I just don't know how you're single. And I was like, Rob, you're telling me. Either do I. And he was like, well, you are a bit intimidating. And this is my most hated thing that I ever hear. Because when you guys will meet me in real life, you will see I am one of the nicest people in the entire world. And I was like, what do you mean? Am I not one of the most approachable people you've ever met? And he was like, yeah, but like, mm. I don't know. You're still intimidating. Admittedly, I'm 5 or 10. I got a lot of ass. I think my stature could potentially be intimidating if someone is a short king. But other than that, I don't think there's anything intimidating about me. I'm confident. I'm smiley. I can talk to anyone. Is that intimidating? Anyways, we went back and forth about it. And I was like, do you know what? Maybe I am intimidating to weak men. And they're not the type of men that I want anyway. So so whoever's listening to this, because I know I'm not the only female in the entire world that gets told this, are you intimidating or are they intimidated? And if they're intimidated, then they're a weak little bitch that you don't want to be with anyway. So it's fine. Here's two intimidating women. May we be them. May we race them. Nothing in this world makes me want to come unhinged more than when a man ignores my texts. Like, you're blessed to even be speaking to me, and then you have the audacity to leave me on red. Like, who do you even think you are? Single people really don't need to hear this advice anymore. This, along with the just keep working on yourself. You can make yourself a priority and be working on yourself and simultaneously want a romantic relationship. Like, the two are not mutually exclusive. I've been single for 10 years, and I've been making myself a priority and working on myself for 10 years. I love my life. I love the freedom my singleness allows me. Hell, this year I traveled to London by myself for an entire month. And I do think it was because I was single that I was able to do that so easily. I didn't have anything tying me down here. And I don't think people who give this advice mean any harm. I think they're actually trying to be helpful. But I can promise you right now, every single person I know has been making themselves a priority and probably will continue to even once they're in a relationship. I'm done. I'm done begging a motherfucker to love me. Done begging him to spend time with me. Like, I swear, some of us women have more balls than you coward ass men. <laughs> you take good women. You take good women and you fucking break us down till we can't take no more till every fucking man we see makes us want to vomit. I don't know what it's like to be in the presence of a real man, a leader, somebody that you know is going to protect you. There you go. So you just admitted you picked the wrong guy all the time. Who's to blame for that one? Fuck. God, dude, accountability is kryptonite now. Like it kills you to see your wife or your girlfriend happy. You have this shit on that. Like, fuck you men and your mommy issues. We are not your fucking enemies. But I'm fucking done. I am so fucking done. I'm tired of hurting. I never deserved this fucking shit. <laughs> The first woman says she can't eat, sleep, can't do anything well, yet she's able to sit in a car and record a video for TikTok. There used to be a time when filming yourself crying was considered crazy as F. <laughs> Notice, this is every video. Me, 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 I, 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 I. These women will always be alone. She canceled the wedding to get ran through by Italian chads. Her finding herself is sending her value into the toilet. Mm. The one who canceled her wedding in Italy is trying so hard to be deep, but said absolutely nothing. I told you, word vomit. I ditched a marriage in Italy because she realized she won't be able to ride the carousel anymore. The pool of the streets is worse than a full moon to a werewolf. <laughs> Once a street queen, always a street queen. Sheesh. The first woman did all that crying with no tears. Yikes. We'll see you guys on the next one.